Aloha. Thank you so much for joining me today on the very first show that we're putting out. Um, there's nothing more precious that we have to give to one another than time. And so I just want to let you know, I appreciate that you are taking some time out of your day to spend with me here on the Tulsi Gabbard Show. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. We got a lot to talk about in the coming weeks. Uh, I will be sharing my perspective on a whole host of topics and issues, and I really look forward to sharing some interesting conversations with you um, with people who I know very well, as well as those who I may be meeting for the first time, but who have an interesting perspective on um, challenges we face, on opportunities that we have ahead of us. Uh, I think you'll like what we have to share. Today, I want to share something with you that has been on my mind and has been troubling me for quite some time and has now compelled me to take action. Now, I love our country, our God-given rights of freedom, life, and liberty that are enshrined in our Constitution and Bill of Rights are what inspires me. Now, I answered the call to duty. I took an oath dedicating my life to supporting and defending those freedoms, both in uniform and in public office. I had the good fortune of growing up here in Hawaii, and growing up here gave me a very special appreciation for the importance of our environment, of protecting our water, protecting our natural resources. And, you know, I used to go and do beach cleanups as a kid and, and do other things trying to protect our home but I always felt like I needed to do more. And so when I was 21 years old, I decided to run for Hawaii State House so that I could actually be in a position to do that, to protect the environment. I had never had any interest in running for office before that. I was not politically affiliated, but as I was filling out the paperwork to go and file my election papers, I had to choose which box I would check. I had to choose which party I would affiliate with. So before doing that, I thought I need to do my research. And I did that. And as I read more and learned more, uh, I was inspired by Democrats who stood up against the war in Vietnam. I was inspired by those who here in Hawaii fought for plantation workers who were being abused and exploited by wealthy landowners, but had nobody to stand up for them and be their voice. I was inspired by leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert F. Kennedy. I was drawn to the ideals of a big tent, inclusive Democratic Party that stood up for working men and women, that stood up for the little guy. Now, in contrast, as I read about the Republican Party at that time, it seemed like it was a party that stood for the interests of big business and warmongering elites. So I became a Democrat and remained one for the last 20 years. Yes, an independent Democrat to be sure, but a Democrat nonetheless. I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. It's now under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers driven by cowardly wokeness, who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms enshrined in our constitution, and who are hostile to people of faith and spirituality, who demonize the police, who protect criminals at the expense of law-abiding Americans, who believe in open borders, who weaponize the national security state to go after their political opponents, and above all, are dragging us ever closer to nuclear war. Now, these are some of the main reasons I'm leaving the Democratic Party, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them here with you today. But these are really important issues. And in the coming weeks, I hope you'll join me because I'm going to be going into each and every one of these in more depth. Now, the pro-war Democratic Party of today has led us to the brink of nuclear war. This party is led by warmongers who are firmly in the grips of the military-industrial complex and don't know or don't care about the cost of war or who pays the price. President Biden and Democratic Party elites have pushed us to the precipice of nuclear war, risking starting World War III and destroying the world as we know it. 
This is the most urgent and existential threat that we face. Now, I ran for president in 2020 because I knew that this is where we were headed. All the signs were there. I raised this issue every single day during the campaign and on the national debate stage. For those of you who may have come to a town hall or who were watching, I'm sure you noticed. But the politicians and the media completely ignored it. They didn't care then, and they don't care now. Now, obviously, I didn't win that election, so I don't have the power to do what is necessary to prevent it. President Biden and Congress do, but they very irresponsibly are refusing to use that power to protect the safety of our country, the American people, and the world from the devastation that a nuclear holocaust would bring. So pr to protect our loved ones, to protect our children and our world, I'm calling on every one of you, every American, to join me in standing up to these cowardly politicians now. This may be our last chance to do so. Now, today's Democratic Party rejects the rule of law. Now, what does that mean? The people's trust, our trust in the rule of law is the foundation of our democracy. And by weaponizing the security state and federal law enforcement for their own partisan political ambitions, Democrat leaders are undermining the rule of law and turning our democracy into a banana republic. Now, across the country, we see a lot of examples of this. We see Democrat politicians calling for defunding the police, demonizing the police, and enacting laws that favor criminals' rights over those of everyday Americans. We have so-called progressive DAs, district attorneys, that let violent criminals out of jail, refusing to charge them, even though many have been arrested 30, 40, or even 50 times. So is it any surprise, really, that crime and murder rates are rapidly increasing? That people don't feel safe walking down the street in their own neighborhoods? Don't feel safe allowing their kids to walk to school? Is it any surprise that firearm purchases for self-defense have skyrocketed over the last couple of years? Now, under the Obama administration, the IRS was used to target conservative groups. Now, Biden's Department of Justice recently indicted 11 pro-life activists for organizing an event blockading an abortion clinic. That's what they were charged with. They didn't use physical force. They weren't dangerous. But seven of those 11 they're facing 11 years in prison and fines of $250,000. I want to say that again. Seven of these pro-life protesters are facing 11 years in prison and fines of $250,000. The Biden Department of Justice and Department of Homeland Security have focused their newly formed domestic terror unit to target parents who are vocally standing in opposition to radical curriculums and explicit sexual content being taught to their kids in public schools. The Biden administration is labeling these parents as terrorists just for showing up at school board meetings and demanding change. Now, President Biden campaigned on a message of unity, healing the partisan divide, bringing the country together. But he just gave a big speech saying that supporters of President Trump are the most extremist group in our country and a threat to our democracy. That's half the country. Now you've got Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris. They are proclaiming that the Supreme Court is illegitimate just because they disagree with its rulings. They're undermining the legitimacy of the Supreme Court given their position of power in making these statements. We've got the Biden administration that stood by and did absolutely nothing as activists protested outside the homes of Supreme Court justices during all hours of the day and night in clear violation of federal law. Now go back and look again. How did the Biden administration treat those pro-life, nonviolent protesters? And look at how they treated those who were protesting 
outside the homes, their families and children of these Supreme Court justices live. When the party in power does not believe in the rule of law, but they're responsible for writing and enforcing laws, our democracy is doomed. Today's Democratic Party does not believe in our constitutionally protected right to free speech. Fostering diversity of thought and freedom of expression is the very foundation of any flourishing democracy. Democratic Party leaders don't agree. They are led by fanatical ideologues who pose a threat to our democracy because they don't believe in freedom. They don't believe in freedom of speech. They don't believe in freedom of thought, freedom of religion. Because of that, they try to censor speech that they don't like, labeling it as, hey, this is misinformation. This is hate speech. This is violent speech. And they are working hand in glove with corporate for-profit media and big tech to smear and silence political opponents and anyone who dares to challenge their authority, their narrative, and therefore exposing their insecurities. Not too long ago, the Biden administration even tried launching their own ministry of truth with the objective of controlling what information we are allowed to read, hear, and say. They will determine what is misinformation, what is true, and what is not. Now, their ideology is one of hate and divisiveness rather than respect and love, aloha. And they stand diametrically opposed to traditional liberalism, which recognizes the basic goodness of people and the autonomy of the individual, supporting civil liberties, supporting a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Now tell me, how can a political party that is opposed to freedom be trusted with our democracy and our God-given freedoms enshrined in the Constitution? They can't be. Today's Democratic Party does not believe in our constitutionally protected right to freedom of religion. Now the Constitution recognizes that our freedom comes from God, not the government, not any government. Unfortunately, Democratic Party leaders reject this truth and are hostile toward people of faith and spirituality and actively try to undermine our religious freedom. Now, during the 2020 Democratic National Convention, they chose to omit the words under God from our Pledge of Allegiance. We've seen over years how high-profile Democratic leaders openly mock or discriminate against people of faith, especially Christians. President Obama once ridiculed Americans for clinging to their guns and religion. Vice President Kamala Harris, back when she was a U.S. Senator in 2018, she remarked that being a member of the Knights of Columbus, a Catholic charity organization, a nonprofit, disqualified Brian Boucher from serving as a federal judge. Senator Dianne Feinstein derided now Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett, who happens to be a devout Catholic, during her Senate confirmation hearing, stating, quote, the dogma lives loudly within you. Now, let's remember the Constitution. Article 6, Section 3 says, and I quote, no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. Now, how is it that the Democratic Party of today doesn't seem to know this? That the Democratic Party of today has forgotten that freedom of religion does not mean freedom from religion. Our government must respect every American's deeply personal relationship with God and our freedom to express that and practice that faith without fear of state-sponsored reprisal or punishment, censorship, or discrimination. Now, whether you believe in God or not isn't the point here. The point is that any political party that is trying to erase the presence of God from every facet of public life and is hostile towards those who choose to worship God cannot be trusted to protect our inalienable God-given rights enshrined in the Constitution and therefore 
should not be in power. Today's Democratic Party does not believe in our constitutionally protected right to bear arms. Now, our founders passed the Second Amendment out of a recognition that every one of us as Americans has a right to defend ourselves and our loved ones and to serve as a check on a tyrannical government seeking to take away our God-given freedoms. The Democratic Party's hatred of the Second Amendment and their increasing authoritarian instincts poses a serious threat to our freedoms. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47, said Beto O'Rourke at a debate when he was running for president. That's just one example of many that display this hatred for the Second Amendment by leading Democrats in this country. Our founders intentionally passed the Second Amendment right after the First Amendment. The majority ruling from the recent Supreme Court uh, striking down New York's law that barred people from concealed carry firearms really summarized clearly why Democrats are so wrong to try to take away our Second Amendment right, rights. And I want to I want to read this statement from that ruling uh, because it really says it so clearly. Just as we do not need to seek a permit to stand on the street corner and exercise our right to free speech, we shouldn't have to seek permission for a law-abiding citizen to carry a firearm. Now, we as a society don't get to pick and choose which of our rights in the Constitution are more worthy of protecting than another. End of quote. So protecting our freedom to defend ourselves and those we love and protecting our rights and freedoms enshrined in the Constitution against a tyrannical power is exactly why we must ensure that our right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, today's Democratic Party is big brother undermining our civil liberties. Now, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution ensures, quote, the right of the American people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures, end of quote. Democratic elite party leaders have had many opportunities to uphold our Fourth Amendment rights, to get rid of unconstitutional provisions of the Patriot Act that violate our civil liberties. And when I was in Congress, I introduced legislation that would repeal the Patriot Act and address the dangerous secret FISA courts being used to undermine our civil liberties, especially those protected by the Fourth Amendment. You wouldn't be surprised to know that the Democratic Party leaders didn't move my bill forward, even allowing it for a vote. Because every time they've had the opportunity, they choose to side with the security state instead of siding with our liberty, our freedom. And we see a lot of examples of this, whether it's using the IRS to snoop into our bank accounts because we sent someone over $600 on Venmo or the Cash App, or supporting the corrupt system of civil asset forfeiture to seize property from law-abiding Americans who've not even been charged with a crime. And if you're one of those people, good luck getting your money or your property back without suing the government. Or most recently, getting credit card companies to keep track of any and all firearm and ammunition related purchases. The Democratic Party stands over and over again with giving Big Brother more power and control over our lives. This stands diametrically opposed to our Constitution and the vision that our founders had for us. Today's Democratic Party racializes everything and blatantly foments anti-white racism. The Democratic machine has betrayed Dr. Martin Luther King's dream, his dream of a nation where we are judged based on the content of our character rather than the color of our skin. And in their blind pursuit of power, Democrat leaders have reduced each of us as God's children to the color of our skin, using identity politics to tear us apart all so they can win a few votes, all, those, all so they can gain more political power. Democrats were completely silent 
in the face of Mayor Lori Lightfoot's blatant racist policy of only accepting interviews with reporters of color because she was struck with the, quote, overwhelming whiteness and maleness. Modern day segregation in schools is being promoted by racial profiteers like Robin D'Angelo and the corrupt self-identified cultural Marxists who lead Black Lives Matter. Where's the Democratic Party of today stand on that? Well, they embrace these people and their ideology and celebrate their racist agenda. They support programs that are teaching our kids in public schools that they are either the privileged or the victims, the oppressors or the oppressed, solely because of the color of their skin. They have become the racists that they claim to hate. Today's Democratic Party is anti-woman. There's no greater expression of hatred and hostility towards women than to erase the existence of women as a category of people. Now, if you've been paying attention, the Democratic Party has always claimed they, to be the champions for women, to uh, stand proudly for the passage and enactment of Title IX, making history, leveling the playing field for women and girls. But if you listen to them lately and you look at what they're doing, the Biden administration and today's Democratic Party are spitting in the face of these achievements by rejecting the objective truth and reality that women exist and are not just a construct in someone's mind. They can no longer even define what a woman is. And they're demanding that we replace words like mother with birthing person and place women at risk just to please biological men who claim to be women at any given moment. They're taking away opportunities and futures from girls in sports by allowing transgender athletes who until recently identified as men and who clearly have a biological advantage of being a man to compete against women. Now, behind the scenes, behind the curtain, the Biden administration is quietly trying to change Title IX through a backdoor rule change that would actually remove women and biological sex from the Title IX statute. Now, if you remember, Title IX was passed specifically out of a recognition of the difference in the biological sex between men and women. And by recognizing that difference in the biological sex, providing opportunities and fairness and a level playing field for women and girls. The Biden administration's action now to take away women and biological sex from that definition of Title IX is absolutely taking away opportunities for millions of young girls and women across the country. They're even now going so far as to claim that it is sexual harassment to address someone by the wrong pronouns. So when you look at all of their actions, really what they're trying to do is to force us to comply. They're trying to force us to comply with this literal insanity by trying to regulate our speech and thought with the threat of punishment if we don't comply. By denying that there are biological differences between men and women, they're erasing women and denying the existence of objective truth. This is really the bigger issue here. Because if one denies the existence of truth, then there are no boundaries. There are no limits in our society. And really what happens then is the truth becomes whatever those in power want it to be. And that's exactly what we are seeing happen in our society, in this country today. Today's Democratic Party is undermining families. Now, families are the bedrock of civilization. Today's Democratic Party does not recognize this truth and the importance of the central foundational role that families play in our society and civilization. And because they don't recognize this truth, they want to strip away the rights of parents to raise their kids, claiming, hey, we in the government know what's better for you, you and your children and your family better than you do. Former Democratic Governor 
of Virginia, Terry McAuliffe, said last year, there is no role for parents in determining a school's curriculum. Parents don't, you don't get a say. The largest teachers union in the country and one of the Democratic Party's biggest donors, the National Education Association, recently passed a resolution that endorses the teaching of critical race theory in classrooms across the country. Public school districts are implementing policies that sexualize kids as young as five or six years old. Taxpayer dollars are being used to bring in drag strippers and encourage gender transition surgery in minors, all kept secret from their parents. Teachers not being allowed to talk to parents about what's going on with their children at school. We have the Department of Health and Human Services Secretary Rachel Levine saying, young children should be empowered to get gender affirmation treatment, which often involves puberty blockers, chemical castration, and irreversible surgeries that cause long-term harm to kids. Now, here's the thing. If parents don't comply, the federal government threatens to bring in child protective services, get them involved, and take your kids away. Families are the foundation of civilization and our society. And today's Democratic Party's policies are very quickly eroding that foundation to the detriment of us all. I've said a lot of things here today. I've briefly outlined many of the serious challenges and problems that we're facing. And I'm going to be going into more depth on each of these because they deserve that time and attention as we go forward in the coming weeks. But as we end uh, our show today, I don't want to leave you feeling hopeless. Let's remember the vision that our founders had for this country, the ideals they set forth. I believe in a government that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. Unfortunately, today's Democratic Party does not. Instead, they stand for a government of, by, and for the powerful elite. So as we remember the ideals our founders laid out for us, let's draw inspiration from their hopes for us their hopes for this country and our potential. And let's take action to bring about that change in our communities, in our states, and in this country so that we truly have a government that is of, by, and for the people. So today I'm calling on my fellow common sense, independent-minded Democrats to join me in taking action Join me in leaving the Democratic Party. If you can no longer stomach the direction that this so-called woke Democratic Party ideologues are taking this country, I invite you to join me. <laughs>